Welcome to the Gateway to the West. The arch is 630 feet tall. It's also 630 feet wide. It's as wide as it is tall. It's the tallest monument in the United States. Taller than the Washington Monument, taller than Mount Rushmore, taller than the Space Needle, taller than the Statue of Liberty, or any other monument you can name. The idea came about in the 1930s to commemorate the Louisiana Purchase of 1803, which makes up parts of 15 states. And also to commemorate President Thomas Jefferson commissioning Lewis and Clark to expand westward. There's a statue of Lewis and Clark on the riverfront with their dog Seaman. So in 1935, President Franklin Roosevelt signed an executive order to go ahead with the plan. In 1947, a competition was held, and it was won by Aero Saarinen, a Finnish-American architect, with his arch design. They broke ground in 1959, laid the foundation, and they started construction on the actual arch in 1963. It was completed in two and a half years on October 28th, 1965 at a cost of less than 15 million dollars with a stainless steel outside. It opened to the public in 1967. A lot was happening in the 60s. In 1963 President John F. Kennedy was assassinated. We went through the civil rights movement of the 1960s. And in 1964 we almost got Disney World. It was going to be named Walt Disney's Riverfront Square. But due to financing disputes, the plan fell through, and shortly afterwards, he chose Orlando, Florida. Some of the rides at Disney World in Orlando were based on rides that were going to be here in St. Louis. So fast forward to more modern times. Between 2013 and 2018, the Arch Grounds underwent a massive $380 million renovation, including the Arch Cafe, the Arch Store, and Museum, as well as putting a lid over the highway, connecting the Arch Grounds to downtown. You can now walk from the Arch right into downtown. There is also a wheelchair accessible replica of the top of the Arch with live feeds if you can't make it to the top. It also became a national park in 2018, Gateway Arch National Park, which also includes the old courthouse. At the old courthouse is where all the Dred Scott cases were before it went to the Supreme Court in their worst decision of all time, leading to the Civil War. At the old courthouse is also where Joseph Pulitzer bought our newspaper, the St. Louis Post-Dispatch, at an auction in 1878. He has a number of prizes named after him in a variety of categories, Pulitzer Prizes. Earlier that year, a lawyer named Louis Brandeis was admitted to the bar at the old courthouse. He went on to become the first Jewish Supreme Court Justice. The tram system was designed by Richard Bowser and incorporates elements of elevator, escalator, and ferris wheel because there's nothing like traveling up a giant arch. It travels at an average of 3.86 miles per hour. It takes about four minutes to get to the top and about three minutes coming down, slightly quicker coming down thanks to gravity. The North Tram became operational in 1967, the South Tram in 1968. Each tram has eight tram cars which can fit up to five people. The seats inside are modeled after a tulip chair also designed by Aero Saarinen, which you can see inside the Arch Museum, which by the way is completely free. You don't need to purchase any tickets to come inside. As you're headed up, you can see some of the 1,076 steps, which are only used for maintenance or emergency purposes. Here's what you can see from the top, looking east towards Illinois. That's the MacArthur Bridge. That's a railroad bridge. It's in the top 20 busiest railroad bridges in the country. That's the Poplar Street Bridge that opened in 1967, the same year as the Arch. You can also see the river boats, the Tom Sawyer and the Becky Thatcher. That's the Eads Bridge, a National Historic Landmark. 
It's the bridge closest to the Casino Queen on the Illinois side. It's the first large structure made of steel. It was completed in 1874, before the Brooklyn Bridge, and many of the principles used to build the Eads Bridge were used on the Brooklyn Bridge. They had an elephant cross from St. Louis to Illinois when it opened because legend had it that elephants wouldn't walk on something unstable. Here's what you can see from the top looking west towards downtown St. Louis. To the south is the Anheuser-Busch Brewery, another national historic landmark. To the left is the Budweiser sign. They do house some Clydesdales there and they also do have tours. You can see inside Bush Stadium, home of the St. Louis Cardinals, 11-time world champions. Second only to the New York Yankees. Right across from that are luxury apartments. That was the first hospital west of the Mississippi River. Also across from Bush Stadium is the Tums Complex. Every single Tums is made right here in St. Louis, over a billion a year. When St. Louis was founded in 1764 by Pierre Laclede and his stepson Auguste Chouteau, they set aside land for the Catholic Church. First temporary structure was here in 1766. The old cathedral, also known as the Basilica of St. Louis, King of France, was completed in 1834. It's the first cathedral west of the Mississippi River and one of two Catholic basilicas in St. Louis. That building with the silver dome top is the Eagleton Courthouse. That's the largest single courthouse in the United States. It's 557 feet and was completed in the year 2000. That's the Gateway Tower. That was also built in 1967, the same year as the Arch. That replaced what was a hotel where Abraham Lincoln once slept. That's the old courthouse, which I mentioned earlier. That little red building is the Wainwright Building. It's the first modern skyscraper. Built in 1891 and still standing, it has a steel frame and emphasized height. It was designed by Adler and Sullivan. Louis Sullivan is known as the father of skyscrapers. That's the Metropolitan Square Building. That's the tallest building in St. Louis. It's 593 feet. That's the dome at America's Center, home to the XFL's St. Louis Battlehawks, and has hosted Beyonce, Taylor Swift, Garth Brooks, the Backstreet Boys, and many other concerts, as well as the 2021 Olympic Gymnastic Trials, the 2022 WWE Royal Rumble, and in 1999, hosted the Pope, the largest indoor gathering in United States history with over 104,000 people. Heading into downtown west, you can see the Wheel and Union Station, also a National Historic Landmark. That's where Harry Truman held up the famous Dewey Defeats Truman newspaper in 1948 as he was traveling back to Washington, D.C. from Kansas City. Heading into Midtown, you can see Chaffetz Arena with the white top, home of the St. Louis University Billikens. Then you get to the Central West End, you can see the Cathedral Basilica, which has the largest mosaic collection in the Western Hemisphere. Beyond that is Forest Park, where you see the trees. You can't see the details inside Forest Park. That's where the zoo is, the art museum, the history museum, the science center, and so much more. I hope you enjoyed my video. Please like and subscribe, and thanks for watching.